Alright, what's up guys, and welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Bitter? And this week we're gonna cover the maths, the, the elemental maths as we call them. Volcarona versus Frostmoth. And uh, while Volcarona is not in the game yet, it has due to the National Deck Smoker OU meta, we know pretty much how it's gonna function, how good or viable that Pokemon really is. And also, of course, Frostmoth being a counterpart of Volcarona and has left quite a mark in uh, the smoker environment and maybe not so much in leagues yet. Um, a small disclaimer in this particular video, and that is that unfortunately I have been sick, or I am still sick, so this video will be a bit on the shorter side, and I will not cover the mood pool as much as between these two, that might actually not be the relevance of their viability, hence why I'm not included it. But with that said, as always, I would to go over their Lee viability and their Smoke No U viability and niches and overarching theme to find out which one of these two is really better. So with that said, we're going to introduce the Pokemon first, or the Pokemon that is introduced first in Volcarona. Now, Volcarona left a mark on Smoke and OU in Generation 5 for obvious reasons. It was the first bug Pokemon that really, really set itself apart of being... Well, look at those stats. It's magnificent. Bug and Fire is pretty much a good typing. There are a few issues with it, but quite frankly, look at this. Resisting Grass, Bug, Fairy, Finding... Steel and Ice, really, really good, very splashable. Weakness of Flying, Water and Rock. Yeah, I mean, there are issues here, and Flying, Water and Rock are quite common, and the reason this Pokemon has been kind of fended off from Smoke and OU primarily has been the Stealth Rock weakness. It has been huge, it has been stopped the release, stopped this Pokemon from functioning properly, and Generation 6, and to an extent 7, it didn't, it didn't become this superb um, sweeper because mainly I guess Pinsir was one of those Pokemon that kept this Pokemon back naturally with really strong aerial aid quick attack. Another Pokemon that kind of held it off was um, Ash Greninja with of course Water Shark and basically dealing with it head on. But with that said, they are not in the game and Heatran, which is probably the only real counter to us, Volcarona is not in the game when Volcarona is introduced. And the reason I say that is because, well, it's that it's just up there. It's speedy, 100 is really good, 105 special defense is really, really good, 135 in special attack, yeah, mmm, yeah. 65 defense kind of low side, same with uh, its attack, but 85 in HP, it's it's a fat speedy mon with really, really good defensive utilities. Even if it is low on defensive side, or in its practical defense, 85 in that his HP, definitely cover the worst of that and it just it's a really really bulky Pokemon with high special attack. Abilities in Flame Body and Swarm. Well not the strongest ability, Flame Body could punish Pokemon if they hit it super effectively or with a physical contact move that is. And Swarm can always be utilized in the lives of Quivet as overall the abilities here are quite nice and quite frankly you don't use Volcar of its abilities, you use it for stabs because it's ridiculously high stats. When it comes to removal pull is where I really want to focus why Heatran is so great. And it's because he has nothing to hit Heatran with. It gets the sap, it gets Bug Buzz, Fire Blast, Flame Thrower. Uh, it also gets Grass Filler in Solar Beam and Giga Drain. And it also gets Psychic, which is tremendous and uh, super helpful. But there is pretty much where all those special attack ends. So there are a clear definition of what it can and cannot do. And while a Fire and uh, Grass combination is usually really good, Without a ground to kind of parry the worst, well, it becomes rather mean, doesn't it? It also gets a synergy move in Fire Dance, which is really, really great for it, as it has a big chance to at least 50% of boosting your special attack by one. Fire Dance is slightly, I would say, weaker than Flamethrower, but it could be worth to exchange that damage distribution in exchange of actually getting your special attack by one. But. It also gets Defog, it gets Roost, and Defogger. This energy could actually be a very, very big possibility with Heavy Duty Boots. But what defined this Pokemon is obvious, and something that, I mean, I mean, come on, it is Quiver Dance. It is probably the fastest Quiver Dancer. I do recognize the Rebomb is still around, but quite frankly, there are no Pokemon like this that have a very, very good defensive typing, a good splashable bulk to kind of capitalize itself in very, very tough situation and can set out Quiver Dance, it is, it is uncanny how good that combination is and is why it has been such a definition of a very, very good smoke with OU Pokemon since it was introduced. It hasn't moved lower than OU and it is because its damage distribution are 
ridiculous. And uh, yeah, Mega Diane, she has been one of those counterparts that kind of parried the worst for um, Volcarona. But now with Heavy Duty Boots and now before we rely on Magic Card, or I mean Magic Bounce, it could actually turn about that Volcarona is now a one man army and will probably define Smoke and OU if it even is gonna stay there. Because while it has, I would say, defined checks and counters. There really aren't the many, and sure, Doug Trio is banned from Smoke and OU, but besides that, we're looking at a combination of Volcarona and Magnuson to be able to deal with heat runs so Volcarona can win, and that is pretty much the story of Volcarona. So, yeah, we're going into Frostmouth with some very, very steep competition, don't we? So, what does Frostmouth bring to the table? Well, the Ice and Bug combination isn't necessarily as impressive as Fire and Bug, where we're assisting in grass, ground, and ice, which is quite alright. But weakness to flying and steel, which is to be expected, and very weak to fire and rock. So, oof, it is rough. It's basically what I felt about a lowland sand slash. That it is defensive. It has defensive switch-ins, but my God, you predict wrong and something dies, and that's usually is Frostmoth. However, it has a few things going for it, and uh, its stat creation might not speak too much for it because it's absolutely not on par with Volcarona. Seven HP, sixty-five on attack, sixteen defense. 125 with special attack, which is phenomenal for an ice type, really. Special defense at 90, which is alright, and 16 speed, so it's definitely slower. It is not as capable as Volcarona when it comes to Quiver Dance, and Beth, this Pokemon can absolutely Quiver Dance. But where it stands out is in its abilities. It has Shield Dust, which is something I guess works really well with VDC, but we gotta focus on the icy scales for obvious reasons. Ice scales boost very much what Furco does. To its defense, this does to its special defense, you get a boost, and with 50% to your special defense. And consider that you only have a really high special defense, that's quite respectable. It's actually quite dangerous, and it makes Frostmoth really scary. Because, yeah, sure, it is on the weaker side, but consider this after one quiver dance, there is a lot of special defense raised already, so we could actually survive special attackers alone because of this ability in combination with a boosting move that really lets no water get in. However, the physical side is still what it is, but on the special defensive side, this guy can take a few hits. Quite naturally, really. Now when it comes to Frostmoth move pool, you know, of course it gets the stabs it needs. The bug side gets the bug buzz, even you turn over to capitalize on that. And the ice side, yet ice beam and blizzard, ice wind, even. Uh, unfortunately, not for East Rye, I do believe that would have helped it, but ice beam is useful in the plenty. And when it comes to filler moves, I'll say they are right. We got Dazzling Gleam, we have Hurricane, and we have Giga Drain for those potentially jelly sense that you could be forced with fitting off against. You even have Miracle, which is kind of good on it. And uh, you have Weather Ball, which I've seen. People use Weather Ball and get it with Sun Team mainly because there is an issue with the um, stab combination, and I guess it stands out now. Let's speak of it, right? We have nothing for Steel types, like at all, and that is the biggest flaw with Frostmoth, really, as there are defined counters for it that can basically stop it, and it doesn't help that its only reliable recovery is Rest, um, not like uh, Volcarona has Roots right now. Unfortunately, I do believe that's something that holds this Pokemon back. That's mainly to do with that it clearly has poten potential to actually set up versus defensive sets, but with no real way of recovery, you can only recover that much, and that is something that's holding Frostmoth bad, at least right now. I do believe it gets something like Roost in the future, even it get Heat Wave or, you know, something like Earth Power to hit those Steel types that Frostmoth would be, while well, maybe not the best of the Quiver Dancer, it would absolutely be on par with the absolute best, because it lacks the filler moves to right now really really set itself apart, and I still believe it has the potential of pulling those off, but as of right now, it's not necessarily there. So yeah, it should go without saying that while I think Frostmoth has a viability option and a very very good inclusion in this game, Volcarona is on a different level, and uh, there is no way that I talk about any Pokemon where Volcarona won't win, because Volcarona is right now standing to be what is that, the absolute best bug types ever introduced, and while there have come Pokemon after it, they are not been even close to what Volcarona produced. Frostmoth is good, and Frostmoth has potential to be something great, but even with the inclusions of stuff like Earth Power, Roost, Heatwave, 
whatever, suffer to deal with the steel types, it doesn't have the stats that Volcarona has. And while it has viability on its own right, it will not be what Volcarona is today. And that is why Volcarona wins this matchup. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode anyway, as I do believe that was a bit of an unfair matchup. But I definitely knew that I won't get the chance to talk about Volcarona ever, so why not try to do it now? So, with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and join us next week for this matchup.